Today is Mother's Day. And this Mother's Day is arguably the strangest, most difficult Mother's Day ever. Because it's a Mother's Day where m many of us cannot be with our mom, not because she's too far away or because she's passed away, but because we're not allowed to be near her. And many moms are struggling today because Mother's Day is a day they look forward to all year because all of their kids are together at one time and they have that joy of having their children around them. And today, they'll be all alone. And for some moms, moms who have lost children, Today is an especially difficult day because they can't even be with loved ones for comfort as they remember and grieve the loss of their child. But in spite of the difficulties of today, I want to address Mother's Day. We can't ignore Mom's Mother's Day just because it isn't what we'd hoped it would be. God commands us to honor our father and our mother. It's the fifth of the Ten Commandments. It's found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. He says, honor your father and mother so that you, you may live long in the land your God has given you. We are given a God-given responsibility to honor mom. And we might not be able to honor her today as we would like to, but we need to do the best that we can with what we have today. And God says that if we will honor mom, it will help our lives as well. So today I want to look at what the Proverbs say about honoring mom, and moms, I want to be very clear, we're not going to be looking at the Proverbs 31 woman, so you can relax. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to be a better mom. I'm here to tell all of us how we can honor the mom that he has given us in a way that truly honors her and in a way that honors God. And we'll be looking at a number of verses from Proverbs. I'll read them as we look at them. If you have your Bible with you, I encourage you to open up to the book of Proverbs so that you're able to find these verses sooner so you can follow along. But I want to look at three questions. I want to look at the question, how do we honor mom? I want to look at the question, how do we dishonor mom? And I want to look at the question, what is it that makes mom happy? How can we make mom happy as we honor her? And then we're going to look at a final command to not rob mom of honor. The book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. It was written mostly by Solomon. The Bible tells us he is the wisest, wisest man that ever lived. And there's a lot for us to learn from this book. So let's begin looking at how do we honor mom. And in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8 and in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 20, it says, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Almost word for word in both of those passages, and the fact that Solomon records it twice means this is important. We honor mom when we listen to her and when we follow the teaching that she gives us. And the word that's used here for teaching is a word that's usually used for moral teaching. So it's mom teaching us the difference between what is right and what is wrong. How many today are listening to this sermon because you want to know God better, you, you have a relationship with Him, you want that relationship to get deeper, <clears throat> and the reason you have that relationship with God is because of your mother. You listened and you followed her teaching. For me, it was a combination between my dad and my mom. My dad had preached a sermon on hell. I didn't want to go there, but it was mom that I talked to about that, and it was mom that knelt down by my bed with me as I asked Jesus into my heart. Moms are great teachers because they're the ones that generally are spending the most time with their children. We've heard the statement, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Because of that relationship that moms have with their children, because of how much they are able to teach them and how much they are able to impart into their lives. And this shows us the importance of a good home life and a mom being there with the children. The last chapter in Proverbs was written by a man named King Lemuel. And here's what it says in verse 1. The sayings of King Lemuel, 
an oracle his mother taught him. King Lemuel practiced what is talked about earlier in the book of Proverbs. He listened to his mom. He responded to her and the teaching that she gave him. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. It says, The rod of correction imparts wisdom, but a child left to himself disgraces his mother. We honor mom when we accept her discipline. Solomon is telling us that that discipline makes us better people. It makes us more approachable to others and more enjoyable by others. And it imparts wisdom to us. In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 17, it says, The eye that mocks a father that scorns obedience to a mother will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley, will be eaten by the vultures. That's not a very good picture, is it? But understand what's being said here. If we do not accept the discipline of our mom, then God is going to step in and his discipline will be more severe. It will be harsher because God cares as much as our mom, actually more. And he will not let us go on that path that we are on. In chapter 31, Verse 28, it says, Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. We honor mom when we bless her. And what this verse is talking about is we're to sing her praises. We're to share with her how much we appreciate who she is and what she has done. That word rise up or arise shows that this is something that's prepared for. This isn't just spontaneous. We're, there's thought and effort putting in to blessing mom. But notice, this also demonstrates the importance that the father has in showing and teaching his children how to honor their mother. Before we move to how we dishonor, I want to share one of the best definitions of honor that I have ever found. It's found in the book, The Gift of Honor by Gary Smalley and John Trent. And they say that honor is a decision that we make to place high value, worth, and importance on another by viewing him or her as a priceless gift and granting that person a position in our lives worthy of great respect. Let me read that again. Honor is a decision that we make to place high value, worth, and importance on another person by viewing him or her as a priceless gift and granting that person a position in our lives worthy of great respect. We honor mom when we see her as a valuable part of our lives and when we express that value to her. Solomon also shares with us how we dishonor mom. In chapter 10, verse 1, he says, A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son grief to his mother. We dishonor mom when we act foolishly. Now that doesn't mean silly. It means foolishly. And, and this verse talks about sons acting foolishly. I have learned through the course of my life that it's not just sons that can act foolishly and dishonor a mom. Daughters can do that as well. But when we look at what Solomon says about a fool, the fool is the opposite of the wise. And in the book of Proverbs, the wise person is the person who believes in God, who follows God, who is submissive to God. So the fool is the one who doesn't believe in God, who doesn't follow what God commands. Throughout the Proverbs, the fool is described as a person who lives for themselves. They tend to be selfish people. They live thinking that there's no accountability for what they do, that they can do whatever they want and the chips will fall where they may, but they'll never have to pay a price for that. The end result of being a fool, according to Proverbs, is we become wicked, we become senseless, we mock other people, and we are arrogant. And we live as if God doesn't exist. 
Solomon in this verse is saying that when we live like a fool, it brings grief to our mom. It brings shame to her. It brings heartbreak. It causes her tremendous worry. It makes her feel like a failure as a mother. And I know many moms have felt this. Chapter 15, verse 20. says, A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish man despises his mother. Another mark of a fool is we despise those that we should honor. In chapter 23, verse 22, it says, Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. I find that most teens go through a period when they dis despise their mother. Mom is old. She's out of touch. She doesn't understand. She really doesn't have much to say and much to add to our lives because she just doesn't get it. She knew what was good 20, 30, 40, sometimes we think 50 or 60 years ago, even though she's not that old. But she doesn't understand it now. And it's usually only as we get past our teen years and get into a life on our own as that we gain the wisdom and the understanding through age and through experience to recognize mom knew a lot more than what we gave her credit for. We dishonor mom when we don't get through that period, when we stay stuck there. For many of us, our goal today is to honor mom in a way that makes mom happy. That's our goal every Mother's Day. We just want to make mom happy because we love her, we care for her, we know she loves us. And for many of us, we send her a card, we'll call her if we can't be there, we'll send her a gift, we'll take her out to dinner. We want to do something special for mom because we want to make that day a special day. Solomon shares with us a number of ways that we make mom happy. In chapter 23, verses 22 through 26, I already read verse 22. I'll read it again. Listen to your father and gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Get wisdom, discipline, and understanding. The father of a righteous man has great joy. He who has a wise son delights in him. May your father and mother be glad. May she who gave you birth rejoice. My son, give me your heart. And let your eyes keep to my ways. Solomon lists a number of ways here that we make mom happy. One is by acquiring truth. We live in a society that says there is no truth, or if there is truth, it's very subjective truth. It can be true for me, but it might not be true for you. Solomon dealt with that as well in, in the book of Proverbs, and he recognized that this whole idea of there not being truth or their truth being subjective is illogical. It can't be true because how can something be true if it's only true part of the time or for some people? Solomon recognized that truth is found in God through his word. And so we make mom happy when we buy truth and do not sell it. When we acquire that truth, we gain in our knowledge of who God is and what he desires from us and live that out in our lives. It says we make mom happy when we get wisdom. And Solomon says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Recognizing that we are going to be accountable to him and living because of that accountability. And so we make good choices. He says we, honor, we make mom happy when we're disciplined. And that doesn't mean that... We make mom happy when we allow others to discipline us. It means that we make mom happy when we learn self-discipline. When we learn to make the right choice. And don't just do what we feel like doing at the time because we feel like doing it at the time. But we choose to do what is best. We make mom happy when we gain understanding. And that word understanding is, is a word that means we gain knowledge and we apply knowledge. In other words, it's another way of saying that we are constantly maturing. 
We don't get stuck. We don't think, well, I matured enough and now I can just be where I am. But we're always growing, becoming a better person. Verse 24, we make mom happy by being righteous, by living a moral, upright life because of our relationship with God. But verse 26, God is speaking here and he wraps this all up. He says, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes keep to my ways. We make mom happy when we seek God, have a relationship with him, and are obedient to him. That's usually our goal for Mother's Day, but in order to accomplish that goal, we need to live that out each and every day. I want to look at just a couple of more verses before we end, looking at not robbing mom. In chapter 20, verse 20, it says, if a man curses his father or mother, his lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. We rub mom when we curse her. We need to forgive. There, I have yet to find a perfect mom, but I have also yet to find a perfect child. We're all imperfect, and, and our tendency is to explain our imperfections by blaming the other for their imperfections. And it's real easy for us to curse mom because of her imperfections and the way those imperfections hurt us and affected us. And yet this verse is saying that rather than cursing mom, we need to forgive mom. Because if we don't, our lamp will be snuffed out. In other words, we're going to miss out on a lot of what God desires for us to enjoy in life. And so we need to forgive mom, not just for our sake, but we need to forgive mom for her sake. In chapter 19, verse 26, it says, He who robs his father and drives out his mother is a son who brings shame and disgrace. Verse 28, verse 24, it says, He who robs his father and mother and says, It is not wrong. He is partnered to him who destroys. Both these verses are talking about the ultimate disgrace to a mom when we rob her. And if we don't forgive, if we don't honor mom, we are robbing her of the honor that she deserves. And then the passage in chapter 28, he's saying when we say, well, she doesn't deserve the honor. It's okay to rob her. Then we are robbing her even more and hurting ourselves even more. Solomon says that it shows our character is far less than what it ought to be. Even if mom wasn't what she should have been, even if mom created tremendous amount of hurt, there are still things there that we can honor her for because we learn from the good and we learn from the bad. We learn from a good example and some moms are very good at setting good examples. But we also learn from bad examples and some moms are better at setting the bad example. But either way we learned and what she did is part of who we are now, part of our strengths Part of the things that other people respect us for. And we can't rob mom by not honoring her and saying she doesn't deserve it because she wasn't perfect when we aren't perfect either. God has commanded that we honor mom. I want to end looking at the last verse of the last chapter in Proverbs. The very fact that this ends with this to me shows its importance. King Lemuel says, give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. The last words of Proverbs are to praise our mother, to give her the reward that she's earned as a mom. And in doing that, we are also praising the God who gave her to us as our mom. And understand 
in order for us to do this, to give her the reward she has earned and to let her works bring her praise at the city gate. This is something that we can't just do one day a year on Mother's Day. This needs to be something that we are doing day in and day out. It needs to be a part of our life. We need to look, be looking for opportunities to praise mom because she plays a big part in who we are and what we do. We can honor mom because God has honored us. And recognize it costs God tremendously to honor us. It cost him the life of his son. And sometimes it costs to honor someone else. But because God has honored us, we can honor mom. And my hope is that we will show his honor of us as we honor our mothers. Let's bow together in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your honor of us. Thank you for the gift that you've given to each of us of our mom. And Lord, we ask that you would help us to honor her well today. And Lord, if she's still around where we can express that honor to her, help us to find a way to be able to do that that's meaningful to her. And Lord, if she's not, help us to honor her in a way that keeps her memory and keeps the impact that she made positively going on so that others will honor her as well. Lord, we thank you. Thank you that you give us this day to remind us of this command to honor mom. We ask that you would help us to do that well, to honor her and to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen.